All right, so what this is, is the 2009 Form B free response. This is question number four, all right? And it says, let R be the region bounded by the curves y equals square root of x, the root function, and y equals x over 2, 1 half x, which is a line, mm -hmm. through the origin, as shown in the figure above. It says, find the area of R. All right, so finding the area of R is not hard at all. That's, this, is, this is the gimme part of this problem. To find the area of R, we just got to take the integral from 0 to 4. They even gave you the limits of integration. And it's a top function, which you should recognize as the square root of x, because it's not linear. And the bottom function, which is x over 2. All right? So I'd write that as the square root of x minus x over 2 dx. That is a point on the AP. So if you have that, give yourself plus 1 to you track your score. Now, the next step here is to do the antiderivative. Take the integral. All right, this is x to the half. All right, so I'm going to go x to the 3 halves over 3 halves minus 1 half x squared over 2. And that is from 0 to 4. I will simplify in the AP here. All right, I'll write this as 2 thirds x to the 3 halves minus x squared over 4 from 0 to 4. All right. And that is the antiderivative. You have this, give yourself a point. Finally, if we do this antiderivative and we do the evaluation, 2 thirds, 4 to the 3 halves, minus 4 squared over 4. Minus, and again, I do this. I do the zero, so we see that those are zero, right? And we do this math. The final answer for letter A is four thirds. Four thirds is worth a point. Part A was worth three points. All right. This problem, I would say, would be this is this is really an easier AP problem. So we would want to get all those points. So that's letter A. So we'll move that aside. All right. The real challenge is start with the next two problems, B and C. Now it says that we have region, region R is the base of a solid. For this solid, the cross sections perpendicular to the x-axis are squares. Find the volume. All right. You have to realize since it's perpendicular to the x-axis, we're going to do this as an integral over x. All right. There. Got rid of the cursor there. So we know volume is going to equal the limit. And since I know the limits of integration this time, I'm going to write them. It's 0 to 4, since it's perpendicular to this axis. All right? And I know it's a of x dx. I always start there. Now, this time it tells you the area is a square, which is L by L. You guys agree? So a square area here. Well. All right, so then I have, and I filled this out personally, I think of it this way. Obviously, L is not something we can integrate, so I have to get it in terms of X. We need to recognize L is this distance right up here between the two curves. So over here, do you guys agree L this time is the square root of X minus X over 2? All right, so I fill this in, and I'm taking a look. This step right here is a point if you had this written. This is also worth three points. That integral right there is worth a point. So if you have that written, give yourself a point. All right? Now, we have to grind this out. The antiderivative and the answer are now, again, worth points. Here we go. The only way to really do this is to square out the binomial, all right, to do the antiderivative. So the step here, square root of x times square root of x is x. Square root of x times x is x to the 3 halves over 2. We double that. So I get minus x to the 3 halves is the middle term, all right? And then x over 2 times x over 2, both negative become positive. What x squared over 4 dx. All right? That is not the antiderivative. That's just the step you need to get there. The antiderivative of this is I know, x squared over 2 minus x to the 5 halves over 5 halves plus 1 fourth x cubed over 3. And that's evaluated from 0 to 4. 
All right, that antiderivative would simplify. Do you guys agree to x squared over 2 minus 2 fifths x 5 halves plus x cubed over 12? Mm -hmm. If you have that, give yourself a point. All right, finally, again, if you substitute 4 and 0, all right, 4 squared over 2 minus 2 fifths. Four to the five halves plus four cubed over twelve minus zero minus zero plus zero. We check that the zeros actually make zero. We don't make that mistake. And if we do this math again, remember when you have a half power, that half four to the half is two, and then raised to the fifth will be thirty-two. But you do all this math out, and you should get eight fifteenths. If you have eight fifteenths. As the answer for B, give yourself a point. Would it be minus x to the 3 halves minus x to the 3 halves? And then you should have minus 2, or is that my mistake? No, 1 half x to the 3 halves, 1 half x to the 3 halves. Because there's a half oh. here, and it doubles. Okay, I'm nope, no, that's all right. So again, a lot of times algebra is what gets us on these, all right? All right, so if I group that this. All right, if I, if I group all this, and this is letter B, all right, and I start shrinking it down, I can get it out of our way. All right. Slot. I don't need much room for the last one because it doesn't ask us to solve the last one. So there's that one. All right, so we come all the way back, and I'll get rid of the blue line. That's not. No. no okay. It says write, but do not value, evaluate an integral expression for the volume of the solid generated when r is rotated about the horizontal line y equals two. All right, so you have to picture. I'll do it in green. And we're going to rotate this the other way. Now, when it says rotate, what shape are we going to get? A ring. We're going to get a ring here, absolutely. So again, you have to see that this starts, the volume in this case, V is going to equal. Do you guys agree since it's, per, it's parallel to the x-axis, it's dx? Mm -hmm. It is A of x dx. Do you guys agree the limits of integration still are 0 to 4? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All right, so it starts there. We recognize that this is a ring. And it's going to have an ri and an ro. Now we're going to have to define those in terms of the curve up top, right? right. So, I'll so you, yeah. So we start with our R. Do you guys R agree this is R I? Yep. And if I move the title so we can see our R O, and the R O is to the this line, all right? We have to define those, all right? Now it is two minus, right? We we're going to see this, but we have to think of this, all right? Again. That this height here, you guys agree it's just the square root of x? And this height here is just x over 2. Alright? So here we go. We get, I see that RO is going to become 2 minus x over 2. Do you guys agree? And what's RI? 2 minus the square root of x. Do you guys agree? Mm -hmm. Now I don't try to do this in one step personally. I say, okay, I know it's 0 to 4. I do know that when I have two rings, do you guys agree it's pi ro squared minus pi ri squared dx? All right. Now I will do this all in one big integral and finish. I'll bring the pi out, 0 to 4. All right. ro in this case is 2 minus x over 2. Free advertising. Everybody, take a look. It's you have to have this integral, and I'm going to put a box around it so we can really look at it. This is worth three points total. Let's talk about how they break it up. The limits in the constant zero to four and pi is worth a point. 
even if you screwed everything else up. So if you have a pi and 0 to 4, give yourself a point. The integrant is worth 2, all the rest. All right? So that's worth 3 points total, and that's the way we break it down. This is worth 9 points. My argument would be is if you're going to do well in the AP, this is one you'd get all 9 on. All right? This is not a hard AP free response problem. Mm -hmm.